Welcome everyone to the PCS Like a Pro show. And I'm excited you guys are all joining us today. Uh, you've only got me today because we're going to be talking about some exciting things to help you prepare for your PCS. I'm just taking a quick second here and getting this shared into our PCS group and with all of my friends. Um, be sure to hit that share button too if you've got friends and other family um, folks that you know that is PCSing this summer and they could use some tips for making it smoother as well. Um, before we get into everything that I'm gonna to talk to you about today in regards to helping to plan for your PCS, I just wanna go over about the, um, the rate filing that the industry is doing and when summer shipments are going to be looking at getting booked. So everyone we know right now is coming down on their orders and getting into DPS and getting their moves set up in DPS for their summer shipments. You've probably gotten a notice, an email or something popped up that said, hey, you know, we can't book your shipment until April because the rates have not been solidified for the summer yet and it may send you into a little bit of a panic mode. Do not worry, this happens every year. This is not the first time it's ever happened. Every year, the industry has to go through what they call rate filing, where they have to submit their rates for the year to Transcom. Transcom has to approve them or deny them. And then um, they get input into DPS and then they can go ahead and start booking shipments from there. So you want your shipment set up in DPS so that way when they start booking shipments, yours is in queue in the line for them to be booking it because they book it in the order that it's submitted in, not necessarily in the order of who needs the PCS first kind of deal. So as soon as you get your orders, get it set up in DPS so that when they start booking those summer shipments, then uh, yours will be in line to be able to get booked. Do not hold on and wait. Do not freak out about it. If you're moving May 14th or after, you're not going to get your TSP assigned until probably early mid-April. Do not freak out about it. It'll be fine. I promise. Um, so we're going to get into today uh, for talking about just things to help you PCS better and prepare for your PCS that is coming up later this year. And so the first thing I want to talk about are other companies out there that can help you PCS a little bit easier. So the first company that I want to talk about is Box Ops. So, so you've heard us talk about this show. You've seen it posted in the groups about this company called Box Ops. And Box Ops is a company that does room labels for your boxes. Now, the great thing that I love about Box Ops is that these labels are big. And if you can tell, like there's a line down the middle, so it goes around the corner of a box. So you see these labels from two different sides of the box. Um, it also gives you a place where you can write the location of where it's going at on here. So this one is bed, um, you know, where we're at right now in Kansas City area. It's, uh, we have split level homes. They're a pretty common thing here. And so if you have a bedroom that is on the bottom level and you wanted to make sure people know that it's there, you can easily write the location of where that room is on these labels. It also gives you a spot to write the box number on here. So we know those inventory tags are notorious for falling off and being lost. Um, so this gives you the ability that when you put it on, you can just notate what the box number is. And then that way, when you're having your stuff delivered, you still have the number written down of what that box is. The great thing that I love about this box op system, so we have the room labels. It comes with color-coded door tags as well. So every room has a specific color for the room label and then a color-coded um, door hanger. And so this is really great because it makes it really easy for your crews to just match colors when it's time to deliver your household goods. Um, you're spending less time like directing traffic and you've got more time to look at your furniture and notate any damage. You've got more time to double check your high value items. You've got more time to just check off the inventory numbers to know that everything arrived as it's supposed to. The second company I want to share is called List and File. So List and File is all the binder tabs. Um, so this is one of them um, for your PCS binder. So it's identity, health, housing, and transit, finance, legal, 
um, stuff for your vehicles, contact info, but it's kind of like a checklist, but they go in a binder um, and they just kind of really help make everything that much easier for you um, in terms of just organizing your PCS binder. Um, I'm gonna take a second here. I'm gonna start dropping the links to these companies in the chat so that way you guys can be able to go back and take a look at them. So the first one I'm dropping in here um, is for Box Ops, and that is to their Etsy store. Um, so you can go and check that out. And then the second one here is to list and file. And then this third company that I want to talk about, let me grab the link real quick here. The third company that I want to share with you is called Military No Stress PCS. So if you were with us a couple weeks ago, we had them on our show to talk about what it is that they do. And so they just do a really great job at taking that stress out of your PCS. We know as soon as we get our orders right, we're going down the Google rabbit hole of uh, researching everything. Everything that we want to know about that um, about that location, everything from housing to your uh, dance studios, to your dentist, to your providers, everything. So with Military No Stress PCS, you can tell them where you're going, tell them what it is you are looking for, and they will go down the rabbit holes of going through the recommendations, going through the reviews, and will present to you with whatever the top, whatever number you want, the top three, top five. So you can say like these are the top five you know dance studios and then you can make a more informed decision but it saves you time that you don't have to go down and research all of that um so i love what it is that they do the fourth company i want to share with you is called nice move city so i wanted to drop um their link in the comments and we've had caroline on our show before um uh, nice Move City, the great thing about what they do, what they provide, is they provide GPS trackers for your shipment. So we know we have Apple Air Tags and the Smart Tags and the Tiles, and those all have to work off of one network and with Bluetooth uh, capabilities. Whereas what uh, Nice Move City provides is a GPS tracker that doesn't rely on one network. It works off the satellites, so you have a more accurate reading as to where your stuff is. Uh, with Nice Move City, you also get some QR codes that you can put on your boxes to be able to scan and to identify what the contents are of those boxes, which comes in really handy if you need to store some items or your seasonal decorations, or if it's, um, you know, you need to identify what to unpack first kind of deal. So you get the QR codes for your inventory, and then you get the GPS trackers with it as well. It's just a really great way to kind of have everything um, together and to know where everything is that um, works as I said not with like, like a Bluetooth um, network kind of like the Apple air tags or the Samsung smart tags go with uh, so just another option to try out the last company the fifth company I want to share with you is called logsa mill moves so logsa mill moves is uh, and all of these companies that I've presented to you today are all either like military spouse or veteran owned affiliated in some former fashion. So Locks and Mill Moves is owned by my friend Isabel, who is an army veteran and active duty military spouse. And they started off as a company who does packing. They hire military spouses and veterans, and they train you on how to pack household goods. And then they would go and uh, pack houses. Um, she's kind of expanded some into doing what's called a managed PPM. So you can hire her and she will get you the driver and the crew and she will kind of manage your ppm for you it's, it's as if you're hiring a full service company and isabel is handling all those details for you so if you are planning on doing a move this summer or looking at doing a ppm take a look into locks and mill moves you can go onto her site you can go and get a quote as to what it's going to cost you compare that to your incentive pay um, but definitely worth taking a look at as well so moving into the next segment section segment that I want to talk about, um, a lot of questions that I get asked a lot about is, you know, like, what are your must do's when it comes to moving? When you know you're PCSing, what are, do you have on your list as far as must do items? 
So the first one is the purge, the PCS purge. Take the time and go through your house, go room by room, go category by category, however it is you want to break it down and do a PCS purge. The great thing about doing a PCS purge is you are going to clean out the things that you are not going to need anymore. It's going to help you make sure you're at or under your weight. So if you do a partial PPM of any kind, you'll be able to claim that weight as well. Um, but it's just, it just makes it also less stuff that you have to unpack when you get to your destination. So take the time to do a purge. Go through your clothing, go through your books, go through the, your kids' toys, go through your kitchen items. My rule of thumb is if it's not sentimental, if you did not use it at your current duty station, if you know you're not using it at your next duty station, and if the item doesn't fit, you should probably consider getting rid of it. Um, it just helps you, you know, go through and realize like, I really don't need 17 pots and pans. I could probably pare that down a little bit. So go through, take stock of what it is that you actually use and consider kind of maybe getting rid of some of that stuff that just takes up some space. The next must do item uh, that I do when it's time to PCS is an inventory. Now, yes, our moving crews will provide you an inventory when they go to pack, but I have my own home inventory. And you can make this as detailed or undetailed as you want it to be. But having your own home inventory just gives you a way to know what it is that you own. And we always try try to go, you know, the extreme. If you have a catastrophic loss, you're going to have to itemize what it is that you are claiming. And so if you already have your own home inventory, you can easily go through and submit that. If you have a box that is missing, you can go through by uh, process of elimination and determine what showed up versus what did not show up and know what is missing to be able to itemize. If you have a house fire or a tornado or a hurricane, you gotta be able to itemize what it is for insurance um, that you are claiming. And so having your, home, your own home inventory at the very beginning definitely helps that process. Now I use an old Excel spreadsheet. I'm gonna drop the links to our Google Drive in the comments here, and you'll see that there is a home inventory template in there. I know a lot of people also do it by pictures, which is a much easier way to do it as well. You go stand in the middle of your room, take a picture, turn a little bit, take another picture, open your cabinet, snap the picture. Uh, that's always great to do, but it's always great if you take the time to go through and you can itemize um, some stuff that you have as well. Going right into the must do number three with that, as I mentioned, is insurance. So this is the perfect time to double check your insurance coverage is when you are planning for your PCS. Um, you want to make sure that you're going to have a personal property policy or runner's insurance of some sort that will cover your household goods while they're in transit and in storage. Some companies are really great at this. Some companies that are not geared towards the military do not cover in transit and in storage. It has to be in your physical location of your home. If you are selling your home, your homeowner's insurance is going to end at some point. You need to check your policy. Sometimes it extends for 30 days and will cover stuff in transit as you as they know you are moving things. Sometimes it ends the day that you close. So you need to take a time to go through and review what your insurance policy is and go through and review what it is that they cover. Maybe for a 30, 60 day period while you're moving, you want some additional coverage in case something happens. Now is the perfect time to determine what that coverage is that you're going to need and start putting that into your budget. Um, so take that time. And I, I know insurance is scary, y'all. I hate dealing with insurance agents too, but it's very much needed. Um, you want to spend those few extra bucks that way in case something does happen on that catastrophic end, you know that you are covered. A reminder to this is that the TSP's liability is $6 per pound up to $75,000. So if you only have a 10,000 pound shipment, they're only liable up to $60,000. And it could cost a lot more than that to replace the stuff that you have in your home, which is why you need your own policy as well. The fourth thing that uh, is a must do in our house is we prepack. 
I'm going to have a show next month where we are going to talk about all the prepacking things. Now, prepack, I'm not saying I'm, I'm packing boxes. I am not doing that. Yes, I do have some totes that are packed down in our basement. That's our Christmas and seasonal stuff. That's my husband's pro gear, some of our sentimental um, childhood things that we don't unpack regularly. I've got that stuff into big uh, tote boxes, tough box type of things, but I'm not packing other boxes. When I say we're prepacking, I'm putting trash bags over our hanging clothes like garment bags. <clears throat> I am using Ziploc flex totes for our folded clothes. I am taking our silverware tray and I am saran wrapping it. So that way the silverware is all together in one spot and I don't have to wash it and it's not falling out when I'm trying to unpack things. Same thing with our steak knife block is I saran wrap that. So that way knives are not falling out when I am trying to unpack. We played that little dance game and hope you don't stab a toe one too many times before I learned that trick. Um, but next month, we're going to break down all of the pre-packing stuff, a little more detail and everything that I do. Um, that way you guys can be able to get your homes prepped. It's not required pre-packing, but it's something I like to do because it just makes the packing days a little smoother. And it helps to make your unpacking days um a little easier as well because um, everything I have pre-packed, we have those boxes unpacked. They can stack my flex totes in the corner. I will unpack those later, but at least I've got cardboard boxes out of my house, which is always the big, huge thing. Uh, the next thing I want to talk about is what is in my PCS bag. So when it comes time to PCSing, I have a big bag um, and it's got all my little whatever you want to call it, tools. It's like my Mary Poppins bag in a way. Um, so going through everything that I have in that bag. So the first thing, obviously, is our PCS binder. So as you can see, this is from our last PCS. I pulled some things out of here. This still has a lot of other good stuff in here, our inventories, um, all of that. I'm going to drop the link for our uh, PCS like a pro downloadable binder into the comments so you can go and grab it. It's currently priced at $4. That will probably change at the end of the week. Um, go back up to regular price then, but it's there so you can grab it. But I have our PCS binder in that bag and it's everything to keep us organized to help us move from one location to the next. The next thing I have in that bag are um, what I showed you earlier today our room labels. Um, when crews say like, hey, this room is done, I go in there, I put on our room labels, and it's also the perfect time. It gives me the opportunity to also put on our contact stamp. So this is ours. It is a uh, self-inking stamp. It's got our name, phone numbers, and email address on it. So the stamp or the label goes on. So whatever side is written on, this goes on that side, wraps around a corner so you can see it um, on another side. Our contact stamp goes right on next to it. So that way, if a box gets misplaced, if it goes missing, you can be able to see um, you know, who it belongs to. And hopefully somebody will email or call us. I also keep a Sharpie marker. This one's red. I usually keep a couple black ones in my bag because as I go through and I put the labels on and our contact stamp on, I'm also checking to make sure our last name is spelled correctly. We've had Harless spelled multiple times, um, many different ways. And uh, so I take the time to correct it and make sure our last name is spelled correctly on the box. Additionally, if I want some more descriptive words on the box, I may go ahead and add them. Um, knowing what's in there, I may, you know, add a few extra things. So when I have a kitchen box, it just says small appliances. I know that's probably our instant pot and our crock pot and the toaster. And so I'll probably just add those labels on there too. So that way I know. So it's always a good thing to keep a Sharpie around. Um, I keep scissors around because you never know when you need to cut something open or cut something apart. Uh, the next thing I keep is um, some tamper evident proof tape. So I usually use these on our high value boxes and I only really use it if I have um, our crews didn't bring the, st the seals that you sign to put on our high value boxes, if they didn't bring them, then I've got my own tamper evident proof tape that I can use for that. Um, the last thing that I keep in my box, I don't use it until we get to our next location. It is a self inking um, confidentiality identity protection roller stamp. So let me just roll this out for you. So this, before we get rid of our boxes, 
I rolled this over all of our contact info stamps. So wherever this is stamped at, I roll this over it and this is what it looks like. It comes out where you can't see what's underneath of it. And it's just a great way to protect some of that um, identifying information when you go to get rid of your boxes. Um, it's not uncommon that we give them to other uh, families that are PCSing, wanting to do a PPM. Um, you know, if somebody else reuses a box and it gets moved in their shipment and it gets misplaced, then you have somebody calling you saying, hey, we have this box of yours. It's really not your box. It's whoever the family is that you gave the boxes to. Um, I saw one time where a family got in trouble because somebody took their boxes and then they dumped the ones they didn't need. But because their contact info was on it, they were the ones that got in trouble um, with the local ordinance of that. So I always just roll it over where our contact stamp is so then you're a little bit protected there um, but that's what i have in our pcs bag um, there's usually phone chargers and car keys and the keys to our padlocks and other things that are in that bag as well but these are the main things that i have in my pcs mary poppins bag of things that get used pretty regularly on um on our pack out and loading days um, I want to talk about a few to wrap up here. A few of our don't forget tips uh, that are kind of essential to your PCS. So the first one is having a budget. It is very important that you guys take the time to sit down and figure out your PCS budget because we hear all the time people going into debt. They weren't sure what they were going to be reimbursed. They weren't sure what their entitlements were. Planning a budget helps you set reali realistic expectations to what your financial needs are going to be during a PCS. In the Google Drive I posted earlier, you will find some budget planning worksheets in there where it walks you through configuring what your per diem rates are going to be, what your mileage rates are going to be, what your DLA is, um, potential TLE that you may utilize. Sit down and try to, you know, plan and figure out what your entitlements are going to be, what you can be reimbursed for, and what your potential expenses are going to be as well. As you book hotels and you can figure some of that stuff out, add that info to the budget planning worksheets. It just goes a long way in helping you have a successful PCS. The next item is having a game plan. You should have a game plan for every piece of your PCS for how you want it to go and what your expectations are for that piece. So the biggest game plan I talk about is usually like, how do you want your house packed? Um, we're used to crews coming in, scattering to the four corners of the house, and then we feel like everything's in disarray and we don't know how to keep track of things and we don't know what's going on. And then we have that stress and that anxiety. That can all end if you have a game plan. So for me, when our crews come in and I give them the tour of the home, talk about what's going in our closet that they should not touch because it's stuff that is um, either for the, that's going in the cars with us, or maybe it's the bathroom that has our cats in it and they don't wanna touch that bathroom until they have packed another bathroom and I can shift them over. But I talk about how do I want my house packed? And so I always ask them to start with my children's rooms because I need my kids to stop adding things to the car pile. I can only fit so much stuff in my car, right? So I want my kids to stop adding things to the car pile. I can only fit so many books and so many Lego sets and so many stuffed animals and so many whatever it is that they have, so many dolls for my daughter into our car. So I always say, can you please pack my children's rooms first so that way they can no longer add stuff to the car pile. I always ask for our kitchen to be packed last because I am that person that likes cooking up until the very end. I know we're gonna have two weeks of cooking out. I don't wanna have to, or two weeks of eating out. I don't wanna have to eat out more than what we already have to. So I always ask for my kitchen to be packed last. Now I will say, if you get everything else done, you know, there's things in there I can let you start uh, packing up, like the mugs and the bakeware, things that I may not need to be able to cook those last two days, but um, I usually ask them to pack that last. And so having a game plan of how you want your home to be packed can go through helping you be able to understand, you know, where people are, um, reduce that stress and anxiety and be able to manage the process a little bit easier. The next thing um, that you should never forget to do is to double check your inventory 
after it's been made, before you sign it, after the packing and loading. Take the time to make sure everything is on there and that it's as accurate as possible. So when I say make sure everything's on there, obviously they're not going to be itemizing every little thing that you own on that inventory. The lines are only so big, right? But you have, you know, three TVs. Are three TVs listed on that inventory? Your hutch in your dining room, is it listed as a hutch? Um, something that, you know, your pottery barn blue three-seater couch, is it just listed as a couch? Do you want to add the word pottery barn to it so that way it's identified as the brand that it is? Take the time to review it and to make sure that it's accurate as much as possible. It's also the great time to review those damage assessment codes that are added on there as well that are supposed to provide the pre-existing current condition of your furniture. So if you have um, so a table on there that's marked as scratched, dented, chipped, uh, gouged, soiled, everything else, is it actually that condition? If it's not, you have the right to write on your inventory, I do not agree with this uh, damage code or these assessments or uh, this pre-existing uh, conditions. Whatever it is, you have the right to disagree with it on the inventory before you sign it. As soon as you sign that inventory, it's binding. It's not supposed to be altered or changed after that. Your signature on the inventory is your agreement to that inventory as being accurate in what it states. So if you have three TVs and only two TVs are listed on there and you one TV goes missing and you go to file a claim for a TV, they're going to say, hey, there's only two TVs listed on here and two TVs were delivered. Um, you know, so you need to make sure it's um, as accurate as possible with the things that are listed on there. The next thing you need to do, and this these, these last two items come on your delivery day. So the first one is going to be to check off the inventory numbers. Even if your stuff is door to door, crazy things have happened. We've seen crazy things happen. We've, if you've been around the military for a hot minute, you've PCS once or twice, you've probably seen some crazy things happen. So check off the inventory numbers. It's your way to make sure that everything has shown up or if something is missing, you're able to identify that, hey, these three boxes did not show up. Um, so take the time, check off the inventory numbers. A um, most common way to do that is usually with the what we call the bingo sheet. So in the Google Drive, um, the link posted there in the comments, you'll see that there's a bingo sheet on there. Um, we can write the color of the tags at the top. And as I call up a number, you just kind of highlight the number, you cross it off. Um, and then you're able to clearly see what numbers were not checked off. You can check the rooms they're supposed to be in, see if maybe they got missed or you identify them as missing. But take the time, check off the inventory numbers. And then the last thing I'm gonna leave you with today is that you need to inspect your high value items. You need to make sure that they have arrived because on the high value inventory, when you sign it, you're signing that those items arrived. If you are missing something that is high value, you cannot go and claim it after delivery day if you sign that high value inventory form. The inventory form says that the items shown up, not necessarily that they were damaged, but I always say take the time, open your high value items and inspect them so you can know anything that is damaged that day as well. It may take some time to open those items. I've got a hutch full of, um, I'm looking at it right now in the other room. Um, it's full of fine china and crystal and Polish pottery. Uh, and other breakable items. And so that all goes on my high value inventory form. And so on delivery day, I always ask, I request a partial unpack and we unpack our high value items to ensure that they showed up. Our gaming systems are on our high value inventory. And so my husband goes and takes the time to unpack those boxes and to ensure that every uh, gaming console showed up and that they're all there. Uh, all of his awards um, and colors and things from all of his different units, that's all on our high value inventory. And so we take the time, all of the picture boxes get opened. So we ensure that all of those awards and um, things from his past units showed up and are there and we can check them off the high value inventory. We have a good size sports memorabilia collection. Um, a lot of autographed signed things from folks that are no longer living that are worth quite a bit. And so we take the time that we go through 
and we ensure that those items showed up and that they're all in good condition. So that way, if anything is missing, if anything is broken in our high value items, we are able to identify it the day of delivery and mark it on the form at delivery. Um, it just goes away to protecting you and helping to make that claims process a little bit easier. So take the time to do that. It is definitely worth it. You will never regret slowing down to take the time to open and inspect your high value items and to ensure that they all not only showed up, but they all are also like okay and not broken or damaged. And if they are, you have the ability to note them on the form at delivery as well. So that's all I've got for you guys today. We talked a lot about from my favorite companies to help you PCS, the must do's, the PCS bag. Hopefully as you guys are planning for your upcoming PCS this summer, there's something here that helped you be able to plan a little bit better, help some expectations a little bit easier. Um, some companies to go and to take a look at that also help our community and PCSing easier as well. As I said, coming up next month in March, um, I'm going to have a show just on pre-packing and what it is that I do when it comes to pre-packing. Coming up in the next couple of weeks, we're going to have some more industry folks on here talking about uh, PPMs and how to protect yourself during that. We're going to have industry on here talking about things they want you to know when you are planning for your, your PCS. And we're also going to kind of do a little interview in reverse kind of deal where we're going to have industry interviewing some of us and talking about, you know, what is it that our military community wants the moving industry to know? So I hope you guys will all join us for that and share in the comments, you know, as they ask these questions, things that you want them to know as well. It's a way for us to be able to kind of bridge that gap and um, just kind of, you know, make it a little easier for all of us. You know, we hear a lot lately about, you know, what the moving industry wants us to know. It's our turn to tell them what we want them to know. So I hope you'll join us for that show as well. Anybody that's planning your PCS in the middle of it, you got questions, issues, concerns, anything, please do not hesitate to reach out. Always happy to help you and guide you um, through that issue as much as possible, whatever it may be, or to help put you in contact with the office or the person that you need to speak with. So please do not hesitate to reach out for that. Until then, everybody, happy Valentine's Day. Enjoy the rest of your Tuesday. If you're like me in Kansas City, we're getting ready for a Super Bowl parade tomorrow because they've canceled school. So why not? When in Rome, do as the Romans, right? Um, until then, until next week, everyone, thank you for joining us. And remember, take care of each other.